isn't it? Come, follow me. The boy grabbed Teo's hand. Teo walked without hesitation, matching the boy stride for stride. You have the rest of your journey ahead of you, your quest, the boy said. I'll point a finger in the right direction, but you get to take the journey yourself. Yes? Yes, said Teo. Once you leave me, you'll be challenged, and it won't always be easy. You will doubt me again, more than once. How could I ever doubt? I never would. It's okay, Teo. Even when you doubt me, I love you, and I'm never upset at you. Remember that as you search for the seals. Teo tried to understand how he would ever doubt Elion, not after what he'd seen. The boy picked a dark stick off the sand and blew on it. The stick grew longer, twisting and intertwining until it met in a point at the top. He handed Teo what was once a simple stick, but was now a staff, like a walking stick with a leather strap attached to its end. Take this. It's a reminder of who I am and who you are. You are mine. He patted Teo's chest. I am with you always. Remember? The only things that can threaten you are the hyena's lies. Teo ran his hand down the smooth wood. With the staff in his grip, he felt strong and powerful. Stronger than the Shatakai. Stronger than Asha. Stronger than the hyenas. When you stand in the face of fear, you'll really know my power. The first seal will come then. Not now? The boy shook his head and smiled and walked away. Soon. Teo slid the staff's strap over his shoulder and hurried after him. Judah and the Roosh were waiting anxiously, the Roosh sitting in the boat, wide-eyed and curious. Teo faced the boy. What if I fail you? You can never fail me, no matter what you do. Now go and have the same faith in yourself that I have in you. I will, I promise, but will I know you in the other world? They call me God, the boy said. God? He knew that name too. Wow, he breathed. Yes, wow, said the boy smiling. Teo hugged the boy who was Elion and who was also God and then climbed into the boat. The boy blew and the boat pushed away from the shore as if carried by a wind, even though there was no wind. The boy on the beach quickly faded from view and was gone. But Teo carried him in his heart and was still lost in the wonder of that. Chapter 10 the water seemed to sing in lush, dark green tones under the boat. Everything was brighter, clearer. Teo's cheeks hurt from smiling, but he couldn't stop. He had met Elion, indescribable because any description would fall short, just as the Roosh had said. Overjoyed and full of boldness, Teo jumped to his feet in a fighting stance, balancing on one foot with his hands in the air. Stokes jumped back. Mimicking Teo, Stokes let out a goofy caw and tackled Teo. Teo fell back, laughing hysterically. Teo popped to his feet again, hit his fighting stance, this time motioning for Gabble. Gabble scrunched his face fiercely and lunged for Teo. Teo ducked out of the way. Gabble landed on the deck of the boat. Teo dove for Gabble. Gabble screamed as Teo landed on him in a mighty belly flop. Teo fell to the floor of the boat, clutching his stomach as he laughed hard and loud. Michael took off to the sky, flipping and kicking. He soared upward, took a nosedive toward Teo, then swooped back up before Teo could catch him. Even us old Rouge can play too, he chuckled, plopping next to Teo on the floor. Elion! Teo cheered. Elion! echoed the Rouge, his friends. Teo had friends, brave, strong friends who deeply loved Elion. He wanted to express how thankful he was for their friendship and help. So he leaned over the edge of the boat, scooped up a handful of green water and stood to make a toast. To the love of Elion and to you all, the Roosh, he sent me. Teo sipped the water from his hand. The water rushed through him. 
as if he'd swallowed a fire that consumed every inch of his body. The three rouge quickly scooped up some water, mimicking Teo. The four travellers cheered as Teo raised his wet palm to the sky. With an easy bump, the boat finally came to a stop against the shoreline where they'd camped the night before. What now? Stokes asked, hopping out of the vessel. The quest. I have to find the first seal. I have to really know the power of Elion. We must find Talia, Michael said, leading them across the beach. Although I think the seal may well find you before we find Talia. The seal will find me, Teo said. Elion said I would have to stand in the face of fear. Exactly, Michael said. Facing his fears was the way to the first seal. That much was now plain, but knowing this didn't dampen his enthusiasm. He'd seen Elion's infinite power and he had the staff. But as they travelled farther from the waters of Elion, Teo noticed the colours around him fading back to their normal hues. They weren't as vivid and as beautiful as before. In fact, his new sense of peace and power had faded too. What if his courage faded as well? What if it eventually faded completely away? The landscape shifted as they journeyed. Walls of rock towered high above them. A twinge of Teo's former anxiety emerged. I don't remember this being here, Michael. We took you around the perimeter when you were asleep. It will be much quicker to climb and cut through the middle of the canyon. Do you think you can manage? The jagged cliffs loomed above them. Height. I'll fly next to you, Teo. I'll protect you, said Stokes. Stokes had said that once before. Teo nodded. Using the staff of Elion, he pulled himself up on a rock, then to another and then to another. He climbed higher, easier than he'd assumed. The rouge flew in close proximity, keeping with his pace. It took nearly all his strength and a few small slips, but he was almost at the top, one more ledge to go. Teo grabbed the edge and pulled himself up, but as he did, his fingers began to slip. Michael, help! Silence. The staff of Elion dangled on his wrist. It was slipping. Don't let go. Teo flung his free hand up and caught the edge of the cliff. He dug his fingernails into the rock and wriggled his feet until the tips of his converse were securely onto something. A squeal and thump sounded behind him. Michael? Gabble? Stokes? No response. Teo pulled with every ounce of strength within him. Where were his protect protectors when he needed them? At the top, the sight of what waited beyond the wall crashed into him. Shatakai, hundreds of them. They filled the canyon. The walls and the ground were li lined with them. A shrill shriek echoed below as one of the bats caught sight of Teo. The others followed in a contagion of raucous squawking. Ruza and Shax stood in the middle of it all. Sinister smiles etched on their black faces. Teo spun round to find the rouge, but they were gone. Panicked, he scanned the area around him, and then he saw them, all three, in the clutches of the Shatakai. The rouge were warriors, his protection. They must have been so focused on not letting him fall that they didn't see the Shatakai coming. Teo watched in horror as the Shatakai tied the rouge to heavy stakes. At their feet, the Shatakai placed piles of wood. They were going to burn his friends. No! Teo scrambled down the cliff, sliding on loose pebbles, scraping the exposed skin on his arms and ripping his jeans. He had to save them. Shatakai swooped close in behind them. He could feel their wings beating the air inches around from his head. One landed on him and licked his neck. And when he tried to shake it free, its claws cut down on his back. The leather strap holding the staff that Elion had given him snapped. The staff clattered down the hill. He didn't have time to think about it, much less go after it. It was all he could do to ignore the pain in his back. Screaming, he spun and slugged the Shatakai onto its backside, finally knocking it free. 
but in the process he tripped and tumbled to the bottom of the steep hill. Teo! Stokes, Stokes cried. The Rouge fought against the rope that bound him, but it was no use. Pain screamed through Teo's body. He could feel the blood seeping into his t-shirt as the scrapes on his back oozed. Rusa approached him slowly, chuckling. Poor little human. You've had the chance to listen to me, but you chose to be brainwashed by the lies of Elion. The black fog once again slipped from the beast's lips and drifted toward Teo. Sadly, you and your friends must now die. Elion can't save you. Why would he? Look at you, Teo. You're such a disappointment to him. Teo struggled to his feet, head spinning. You are the one who lies, Rusa, he yelled. His voice bounced through the canyon. Elion is not the monster you told me he was. Rusa stared at him, disgusted. He suddenly launched himself forward, a streaking slash of black fur, claws extended. Teo dove to his right and rolled out of reach. He came to a crouch crouch and saw Elion's staff a few feet away. Rusa was circling back around, rushing at him again already. Frantic, Teo dove for the staff, grabbed it with his right hand and swung it up like a baseball bat just as Rusa reached him. The staff slammed into the Shadokai's face. Rusa screeched as he fell to the ground. Furious now, he lunged to his feet and charged towards Teo. Rusa slashed at Teo's jaw with his claws, grazing it enough to make him wince from the pain. Before the beast could slash again, Teo swung the staff with all his might. It cracked Ruza's jaw and the bat flew backward, flailed widely and landed with a thud. Teo didn't take the time to think or wait for the Shadokai to collect himself. He spun and ran. Get him! Ruza screamed. With a terrible shriek, a hundred black bats launched themselves at him from every direction. Teo took a sharp turn and pumped his feet as fast as they would go. A Shadokai caught him from behind and dragged a claw across Teo's arm. Two more nipped at his back. Teo ran faster, blind with fear. There was no way to fight them off or save his friends, but he had to try at least to escape or he'd never get the seal. Teo reached the incline and scrambled up as fast as he could, doing his best to swat away the Shadokai with the staff as they nipped him. He reached the top much quicker than expected, but the sky was now full of the flying beasts and there was nowhere to run. The other side was way too steep. There was no hope. Mind now lost in fear, Teo closed his eyes tight and tried desperately to think of Elion. The moment... He imagined the boy. The world around him slowed. The shrieks of the Shatakai faded and the hot, thick air became motionless and cool. Who am I, Teo? Teo's heart jumped. He heard Elion's gentle voice. You are Elion, he said aloud. You are infinite. And who are those who've come against me? Teo recalled the boy's story about the lion and the hyena. The hyenas, he said, Shatakai. Can they hurt me? No. Can they threaten me? No. And where am I? With me, everywhere. Closer than your breath. Teo. So why do you fear, my son? Teo blinked. He'd forgotten. Since I'm with you, who can threaten you? Teo knew. He knew for certain in that moment and he shouted it for all to hear. Nothing, nothing can threaten me because you are all powerful. You are the light without darkness. You are infinite. Nothing can threaten you, so nothing can threaten me. Now open your eyes, Teo. Show them who I am. <laughs>